Scrubbing In. I'm Paul Ross. I'm going to take you around Navy Medicine to show who we are and what we do. Today we're at the Naval Medical Research Center in Silver Spring, Maryland. We're visiting the Infectious Disease Directorate to find out how they protect our warfighters. Today I'm with Dr. Kevin Porter, Director of the Infectious Disease Directorate. What are we going to be doing today? Hi Paul, glad you could make it. Thank you sir. Well, what we're going to do is take you around to various parts of the Infectious Disease Directorate and show you what it is that we do here. As you know, the military deploys to many different areas of the globe, and in those areas exist tropical infectious diseases such as dengue and malaria that the soldiers may encounter, and as a result of that, they become ill and subsequently won't be able to perform their duty. It's our job to devise vaccines and other products that will protect those warfighters from those infectious diseases. Well, sir, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to get started. Well, great, let's go. First stop at the Naval Medical Research Center was the Naval Infectious Disease Diagnostic Lab, where I was introduced to the head of the lab, Lieutenant Commander Todd Myers. Hi, Hi Paul. Um, welcome to the Naval Infectious Diseases Diagnostic Lab. Uh, what we do is we're a uh, clinical laboratory that we set up to be able to run special pathogen, special type uh, diseases, such as uh, dengue, chikungunya, um, MERS-CoV. We're set to be able to, to respond rapidly to any, any outbreaks um, that are coming up. Today, I'll be running you through a scenario of what it might look like if when we get uh, samples into the laboratory Great. to be able to run a, a, a dengue and chikungunya. Well, I'm ready to go, so. Uh... Do I need to get geared up? Yes, so uh, this is a what we call an easy one. Extract. Well, walking me through the extraction machine process, it, Commander Myers explained that safety is at the forefront of everything they do. We just want to have caution with all that and, and try not to spill anything or, or that, because it could be live virus in there. Right. And you'll dispense it. After that, it was time to get some hands-on experience. OK, very good. There you go. Very good. Close it. Close it. After we extracted the nucleic acids from the sample, it was time to move on to the next step. Up next was the amplification machine. The machine takes the DNA and RNA from the samples and multiplies it over and over until it has enough material to test. It then analyzes the sample to look for any viruses that might be present. We push on that button and it'll come out and the plate will sit right in there. Yep, and then we'll just push it on the, on the button again. It's loaded on there now. We would load it, we'd bring up the right program we're using. In this case, we're looking for chikungunya and dengue. So we have a multiplex, so we only have to run it once. If I wanted to look at chikungunya and dengue, I'd have to run one run, and then come back and run another run. Okay. And it takes over an hour to do these runs. So if we look at this, in this particular sample, we see a red line, which we actually is, is the chikungunya line. And then we see a um, green line, which is the dengue line. So in this, and they both cross the threshold value. Before 40, actually 30, 39, 40 is, is kind of our cutoff. So in this case, we would indicate that this is a positive sample for co-infection. Oh, Lieutenant Commander, thanks for having me out today. I appreciate it. I learned a lot. Next up, wound well, infections. In I'm in the wound infection department with Lieutenant Rebecca Pavlicek, who's a division director of bacteriology. And she's going to show me how you guys fight wound infections? Yes. So we work with doctors, both, na both Navy, civilian, and from around the globe to monitor possible outbreaks that are occurring within the hospitals. Um, what we have here is a sample that just arrived from Longstuhl, Germany, which is a hospital we've been monitoring. Um, we receive tissue and effluent, so basically exudate from wounds of, of our service members who have become infected with possible bacterial infections. The lieutenant told me how to streak using blood auger, which was much harder than it looked. Just like this. Yes. Careful, it is auger, so it's actually very yes. delicate. It's a technique that you'd pick up um, after a couple of years of training. Then the bacteria went into an incubator to like simulate that. growing in the human body. 
So this would be what you'd possibly see from this from the streaking that you did. After that, it was from time this, to identify the bacteria. Take and do what they call a gram stain. Now, gram stain is important for helping determine which antibiotics to use. And from here, once it's dry, we would look at it under a microscope. After thing. going through the yeah. gram staining yeah. process, right. it was time to prep our sample yeah. for more testing. After the prep, we loaded the sample into the Phoenix, which so tested Phoenix against various antibiotics. Instrument. Um, it can identify up to a hundred different isolates in usually 12 to 24 hours. Wow. And this is not just identification, it also tells you what drugs it's resistant to and how much of those drugs it's resistant to. So it's a very powerful tool. So we're actually going to load a cartridge on. All right, so we'll you're just going to B02, bingo. Put it in, and you're good to go. That's it. If you come back in about 12 hours, you'll know what bacteria we isolated and what drugs it's resistant to. After spending all morning in a lab coat, it was time to see how Navy Medicine is fighting diseases through prevention. I'm headed into the clinical trial center where they're going to show me how they administer vaccines, and I think they're going to stick me with a needle. I'm with Captain Steven Savarino head of the Diarrheal Diseases Research Program, and he's going to give me prep for some clinical trials. What are we going to be doing? Well, you know, Paul, we do clinical trials here testing new vaccines against important infectious diseases that our sailors, Marines, and uh, folks in other services encounter when they go overseas. Today, we're going to be walking through some of the procedures that we've been using recently in studies of new vaccines against important causes of diarrheal diseases that occur in our troops when they go overseas. And then it was time to see the methods, up close, perhaps too close. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm, I, I guess, as ready as anyone ever is ready to get stuck with a needle, so. Paul, you're not quite ready. I'm going to have to ask you to take off that shirt so nope. that we can see your upper arm. All right. Well, we'll, we'll do that, and we'll, uh, we'll get started. All right, so I've got my dress shirt off. I did some push-ups. I'm feeling good, and Captain Savarino is now going to stick me with a needle. So, well, Paul, started. what we're going to do, um, we're, we're going to do a demonstration this morning to give you some idea of how we've been giving one of our uh, new vaccines uh, that's in development, and that's by two different methods. And, yes, one does involve uh, a, a needle just under the skin, a very small needle, and the other method, which is, which is akin to that but doesn't involve a needle, is basically with a skin patch that goes in the skin. Dr. Savarino gave me a choice between which of the two vaccines I would receive first. Which would you like first? So I fearlessly made uh, my let's decision. Let's do easy, non-hurt E1 first. Okay, okay. Roll up your sleeve just a little bit more because I'm going to work just over the muscle on sure. your outer arm. I'm doing a and lot of curls. For oh, yeah, this, I can tell, I can shot. tell, yeah. which is great. Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're in good shape there. Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do is take a small piece of um, uh, very, very lightly uh, light grade sandpaper and basically stroke down about 10 times here and basically what I'm doing is taking off the, 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 the dead layer of skin and that is just pr uh, creating an atmosphere, creating an area where, this, where the vaccine will actually get absorbed through the skin. That's why we call it transcutaneous immunization. Then I would come in and the vaccine is actually in this, in this solution, in this pipette. This is uh, uh, of course, for our purposes, simulation, just some, um, some uh, salt solution. So normally what I would do is I would drip this on this spot. It's absorbed by the patch. And then I would put some adhesive over that so that we're basically not going to have any problems with it coming off over the course of the next several hours. After prolonging so the inevitable, that on there. it was time to earn my paycheck. Okay, square marks the spot. And I'm gonna be basically sticking that needle right in there, very, very close under the surface of the skin. And you can see that it's a very small needle. Um, and we, again, we call this intradermal vaccination. And um, you're going to feel a little pinprick, but it's not going to be really very much. And I know that I've done this right when I inject that 
saline or vaccine if this were real, and we see little bumps on your skin, yep. like you do now. We call that peau d'orange. It's like the skin of an orange. Basically, we're in the layers of the skin where what's lifted are basically the hair follicles are going through there, so they're right. still pinching down. Um, and that is an intradermal vaccination. How much did that hurt, Paul? That just, I mean, not, not too bad. You I mean, could, you could take it. The camera's not bad at all. Yeah. Yeah. And that's basically uh, two different ways of vaccinating on the skin and trying to exploit the rich immune system, the plexus of immune cells that are in the skin, and that we know interact with the gut. With that, my day at the Naval Medical Research Center was done. At the Naval Medical Research Center, staff work to identify, treat, and prevent a variety of viruses and infections. It's just one more way that Navy Medicine keeps our service members safe and ready. Thanks for joining us on Scrubbing In. We'll see you next time. Next time on Scrubbing In. We return to the Naval Medical Research Center to find out how they're using mosquitoes to combat diseases. And we need these mosquitoes to bite your forearms.